picture, but of my uh, of my contact information, because if there's anything that you walk away saying, oh man, what about this? Or I wanna hear more about that. Or can you send me a link to this? I want you to have my contact information. Shoot me an email, send me a text, whatever works best for you. Um, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, these are my asks of you. Please turn on your camera if possible. Um, I've got a couple of people who have a camera on. I understand we're living in a world of COVID. There's people that messaged me earlier saying, hey, look, I've got COVID. I'm going to try and attend. I totally get all that, right? Um, but if you're able to, please turn on your camera because it sure is nice to see you at least pretending to laugh at my jokes. Um, and just to interact with you, that, that, that helps a ton. Uh, please participate in the way that you are comfortable. I am super introverted. I'm the guy at church when they say, now say hi to your neighbors. I pretend like I get an alert on my phone and I put my head down, right? And so I'm going to give you opportunities to interact, whether it's through chat, whether it's anonymous, anonymously, please interact in a way that uh, is comfortable for you. And please have a good time, okay? Uh, we want to have fun. Um, I just, I'm a big believer that we take everything in life far too seriously or, or not everything, most things. Uh, so try and have a good time and let's, uh, let's hopefully learn a little bit. We're going to start with an activity that I did as a high, I'm going to skip the bio. I'm Alex. Uh, we're going to start with an activity that I did when I was a high school math teacher. And what I want you to do, and I know that we're, we're talking K-5 for ST Math, but put yourself in the mind frame of you as a sophomore or a junior in high school, okay? Now take out all the uh, extraneous stuff. We're only thinking of math, all right? We're only thinking of math. And at this time in your life, would you have, and actually, let me just go ahead and uh, put this up. Um, if you can, actually, I should put that in the link or in the, uh, da, 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 oh, come on. Let me put this in the chat. Where did it go? Copy, where's my chat? All right, go ahead and go to this link. Send this to everyone. And it should take you to this little Padlet. It didn't take you to the Padlet. Let's try this. Share that. I'm going to copy this. There you go. Go ahead and go to that. And don't start typing yet. I'm going to tell you what to do, OK? I am your high school, I don't know, algebra, geometry teacher. And this is our first day. And I am so glad that you're my students. Now, taking that hat off, this is something that you can do with your elementary school teachers when you're in a meeting with them. If you're a math coach, this is something that you could do with your groups of teachers. This is something that you can teach your teachers to do with their students. Okay, taking the other hat back on. All right. Hey, uh, so glad that you're my students. Um, you know, I just want you to be honest right now. How do you feel about math? You can see in the classroom, there's four walls and there's a sign on each of the walls. Over there, it says, I like math because. Over there, it says, I like math, but. Over here, it says, I hate math because. And over here, it says, I hate math, but, and you're going to go to that wall. You're going to get up out of your seat. You're going to go to that wall, and you're going to finish that sentence in your own mind. And then hopefully some of us are going to share, all right? And in our digital world right now, we are going to go to this Padlet, and you are going to go ahead and type in the sentence that most fits you when you were, say, a sophomore or junior in high school. Not right now. Right, because we've had so many experiences, not only in math since then, but in life. Okay, but as a sophomore or junior in high school, go ahead and type into the Padlet now, finishing your sentence. You don't have to attach your name to it. You don't have to identify who you are. But as a high school sophomore or junior, go ahead and finish that sentence. Go ahead now.
I guess. Uh, and so if you're a minder, please make sure that you're doing this as well. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like we've got 25 people or so, including me. So I should go ahead and do this too. Alex, do you want us to fill in more than one or just respond once? No, no, just the one that the one that fits you. I guess you're gonna see which one's mine. I'll give another minute or so. Drop the link again for this. I should be able to do that. Thank you. All right, so what do we have here? Let's see, uh, I hate math, but now one of the reasons I did this with my students was because I wanted them to know that as their math teacher, I could not possibly care less about how they felt about math. I did not ever want them to look at me and think he thinks I don't like math or because he knows I don't like math. Now, our elementary teachers are human beings. We would love for all of them to love math. We would love for all of them to have never said, I'm not a math person, but we've got to meet them where they are. And some of the questions that were in today's session, like, what do I say to a teacher that says that? Do you have any ideas for how to work with teachers who feel this way? Let's meet them where they are first. So that's why, that's the main reason I did this with my kids. I hate math, but it is what I am best at teaching. Very interesting. I like, I hate math because I used to be great at it in elementary, but as the concepts got harder, I just don't get it. I always feel stupid, tests are stressful, it is too hard, I've been told I'm not good. Common theme there, it has to do with how that person feels about their own ability or had somebody else made them feel about their ability. I like math, but I struggle to visualize it at higher levels. Sometimes it's too hard, sometimes it is difficult, very challenging. I was not good, look at that. People enjoyed it, but still struggled with the fact that it was difficult. I love golf. I am so bad, right? But like, it's interesting that I love it so much, but I still struggle. I like math because it's like a puzzle. It comes naturally easy. I am better at it than reading. There's always a correct answer because it's easy and has concrete answers. I am good at it. Now, if anybody said, I love art or I like art because, they would probably comment on, I don't know, the natural beauty of art, or I like dancing because it's a way that I express myself. So it's interesting that in math, nobody ever says that. My students never said that. I love math because it's beautiful and mysterious. I love math because I'm curious. They never said that, right? But if we think about our little ones and the approach they take to mathematics, they often take that approach. And that's because they're curious about everything, right? So thank you for participating in that. Let's see if I can get this back up here. So the session is titled, I'm not a math person. So maybe thinking about what you saw from the answers there, maybe thinking about how you feel. Why do you think people say this? Okay, now this is different than saying I like math or I don't like math. Why do you think people say this? Well, I'm not a math person. Go ahead and type in the chat. Why do you think people say this? I'm not a math person. Maybe because they struggle. They've heard it and they feel like they identify. They don't do it the way that other people do it. It doesn't click for them quickly, a lack of confidence. They don't have the confidence. They think it's an innate ability rather than something you learn. That's, yeah, that's definitely something that we could, uh, we could talk about for days and days and days. Teachers don't feel as confident in teaching, so students don't feel as confident in learning. Progressive, so maybe they miss something. This is something that I don't think they're ever saying, and I'm going to type it in here.
I don't think somebody ever says this. I don't think somebody ever says, well, I'm just not a math person because I lack intrinsic curiosity. I don't think that that's something that we hear. We often hear a lot of the things you said. We often hear, oh, I liked math until, and then something happened, whether that something was a bad experience, like some of y'all said, whether that something was, sorry about that, whether that something was a teacher who maybe made them feel like, yeah, I don't know, this person just isn't getting it, right? But nobody, I've never heard anybody say, when I was, I was a math teacher for eight and a half years, you know, and it was that time in my life where you'd meet people and they'd say, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a teacher. Wow, that's great. What do you teach? I teach math. Oh, wow. I liked math right until, that's what I got most often. I liked math right until, and then they had a story, okay? And so what I think happens too, too often is we get to third-ish, fourth-ish grade, and all of a sudden math becomes not something that we get our fingers dirty in, but something that has rules that we have to begin to learn in order to play. And not rules like keep your hands to yourself, or if you're dribbling the basketball, you shouldn't stop. You, you know, if you stop dribbling, you now have to pass or shoot. Those are totally different kinds of rules. Rules like the waltz is a three-step cadence. And if you watch somebody who's forced to dance and is counting one, two, three, one, two, three, while they're dancing, they're not experiencing the dance. They're simply following the rule. And so this is a way to look at adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. And it's just a different way to view this concept. Okay, can everybody see the bucket there? Are we good? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Okay, Robin, you're saying no, but other people are saying yes. So maybe uh, you're just not on the Zoom screen. Okay, cool. So. Just imagine this bucket has a bunch of positives and a bunch of negatives in it. Every time there's a positive and a negative, it balances out to zero. So the, the let, let's say there's a, a liquid in here. And so the temperature is zero because I've got 10 positives and 10 negatives. The temperature is zero. Are we good on that? 10 positives, 10 negatives balances out to zero, right? I took 10 steps forward. I took 10 steps back. I, I'm in the same place. We're good on that, yes? Cool. What's the temperature now? Let's see, put it in the chat, hold up a, hold up, well, I was gonna tell you to hold up a finger, but just make sure you hold up the right one. I can't find my chat. There we go, chat, there we go. One, good, positive one, right? I put in a positive, it went up. That's awesome, very cool. Hey y'all, what's the temperature now? Type it in, hold up your hand. Zero. I see mind people answering. <laughs> Everybody good? Temperature zero? Yeah. Uh, let me put that where you can see it. What's the temperature now? Awesome, awesome, really cool. Watch this, watch this. What's the temperature now? Now, if I don't know, if I don't know, I can do this right now. I haven't used this program in a while. Let's see if I, I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I could do all that, right? Let's, uh, let's get rid of those.
But if you think about what I did, we had five. And what did I do? I took out a negative. So I really did this, five minus negative one, which is often how that normally gets presented to students first. And then they try and come up with some sort of like, I mean, I used to do this. Every, anything I say that's a bad tactic, I used to do. And I had to learn my way out of it. But like, oh, there's two negatives. So just go like this, put them together, and make a plus sign. That's a rule, right? It's some sort of an algorithm. Every time we take out a negative, it becomes a positive. It's because we've taken this really interesting and curious topic about how come when we take out, take away a negative, a value increases. A topic that's really easy to think about, but unfortunately we overcomplicate it with rules. And I think that's such a huge reason of everything we commented on in the sheet here. I don't know where it went. Everything we commented on here, I think it's such a common element. We get to that point to where we don't explore anymore. And if I'm easy at following rules or easy, or, or excuse me, good at following rules, or it's easy for me to apply them, then that fits. And I like math and I'm good at math. But if now my curiosity is taken away, unfortunately, I don't get to experience it the right way. I need to log in real quick. And uh, now I told you that I'd give you a chance to participate in the way that you felt comfortable. Is there a non-minder? And there's only a couple of you who have your cameras on. Even if you don't have your camera on, you can still be the one who does this for me. But is there a non-minder who's willing to participate a little bit? If you are, go ahead and unmute and say, yeah, I'll do that for you, Alex. Otherwise, I got to call on one of you. And Robin, you know it's going to be you. I can do it. Marguerite, is that you? Yep. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. So whether you know anything about ST math or whether you know nothing about ST math, um, you can just start playing. It's just very much like a game. I'm clicking around, Marguerite. I'm seeing nothing's happening except for that shape up there is sort of glowing. Then I go up here and I realize, man, I can select cubes here. So Marguerite, go ahead and decide how many of these cubes do you want me to select? 20. Okay. Any reason why you chose 20? Um, because the square at the bottom says four and five, and it looks like maybe the cubes will fill this rectangle. Awesome, awesome. A lot of brain science behind what's happening. I gave you my uh, email and phone number at the beginning. I'll give it again at the end. Uh, because we were kind of cramped to a smaller session or, or smaller time, there was some stuff I didn't have an opportunity to go through. I'd love to talk to you about the brain science behind this. Okay, but she was making predictions. She was taking in information that she was seeing based on that information. She was predicting. We're now going to test her hypothesis. Let's see what happens. All right, you're good. You made it across the screen. Where's the other one I want to see? I think it's, it might be this one. Go ahead and do this one, Marguerite. 10. It was the other one. I'm going back. All right. One more for me, please. 27. How did you get 27? Because to fill this big square, it's five times five is 25, and then two more. 27. Okay. Did anybody not see those other two and think right away, okay, it's 25? Okay. A couple nods. I'm going to just assume that those of you who don't have a camera on, you're nodding. All right, so we got 27. 
I'm going to pause this. Okay. So once we fill those 25, here come those other two going over there. And Marguerite, I love the way that you express that. I said, how'd you get 27? She said, well, to fill the big square is five by five or five times five. And then there's two more. So I added two. Marguerite, let me ask you a question. Mathematically, why did you not do five plus two first before you went ahead and then multiplied by five? In other words, how come you didn't take this five multiply it by those two, or excuse me, add those two first before you then multiplied by that five. How come? Because those two are just like two little squares. They're not two more in every row. Um, or if I did, like if I added the two first, it would be five times seven and I don't have a five by seven rectangle. Right, right. Notice what Marguerite did not say. Well, Alex, in fourth grade, I learned the mnemonic PEMDAS. You know what that stands for? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but that's really not what it means. It means that when we are doing order of operations, we start with parentheses, then we look for exponents, then we multiply and divide first, although those can be interchanged before we add or subtract. And as I've done this demo with people, I've often had them say, well, it's order of operations. And I'll go, really? Really? Did you really go PEMDAS? Let me, and they go, well, no, I didn't. Okay. So tell me what you did. Well, I had to fill the big one first and then just add the other ones. Right? So ST math allows for an experience. An experience where students play a game and make connections connections to mathematical concepts that help them conquer the game. And then once that happens, they can then have an understanding of the underlying mathematical concept. Okay. And so here's another one that looks, I mean, it's a, it's the same concept. I'm going to change this one. We're calling an audible. We take what we call a visual to symbolic approach. Now, uh, you heard Debbie talk about it a little bit in the beginning. Again, like I said, I'm not going to be able to get into the brain science a lot here, right? But the way that the brain learns is, is the same for all mammals, okay? And so by going through and having an experience, seeing something like this, I'm going to walk you through this instead of actually, you know what? Somebody else willing? Come on, Marguerite, you're awesome. Somebody else willing to jump in? Oh, I see a brave soul. That brave soul is... Robin's giving her thumb up. Robin, can you unmute? Yep. Robin, my friend from California, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Robin, what do you notice up here in this picture? I notice five animals who it looks like they don't have any legs. Okay, how many legs do they have total? Uh, three of them have two legs each, and two of them have four legs each. For a total of? Uh, two, four, six, plus eight, it looks like 14. Okay, so notice she did some grouping. First, she did some grouping, three times two plus two times four. But then when I said, well, how many? She said, well, forget that. I'm just going to go two, four, six, eight, right? <laughs> so she did some skip counting. She did some grouping. A kindergartner might just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and count them all. So a super low floor for entry, super low floor for entry. Pretty much anybody who's got one-to-one -one correspondence can play this game. So in ST math, we start like this. Now imagine if every person who ever said, I'm not a math person, started like this. Figure out how many legs are here. They'd never be told you don't know the method. They'd never be told that's not the way we do it. They'd never be told, show your work. They would just figure out how many legs there were. But eventually the puzzle would change. And we'd say, okay, Robin, hey, look at this. Robin, this new picture has three birds. How many legs does three birds have? Do you want me to answer like yeah. me or yeah. make no, some yeah, mistakes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so three birds would have six legs because three birds each have one six has legs, two legs. Right? And two dogs has eight legs. Mm -hmm. 
And even if at this point, somebody had to close their eyes and picture two dogs and then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they could use their math skill to answer what's being presented to them. And eventually we introduce the symbols of mathematics. And we say to them, in order to get total number of legs, we're gonna take these three birds, count up how many legs they have. We're gonna take these two dogs and count out how many legs they have. And we're gonna add them together. And when you're doing that, we call that multiplication. We don't ever introduce the word multiplication until after they've done it over and over and over and over again. It's kind of like the way we learn English. Hey, you've been talking for the last five or six years. You want to know what that is? It's an adjective. What are some other adjectives? Big, small, light, dark, heavy, light. Right? So now they've had their life experience and they're given the name of what it is. So they've played this game, they've had this experience, and now they're being told, we call that multiplication. Okay, great. I can call it whatever you want because I know how to do it. Eventually, we can take out those pictures and we can say, you're going to work on this. And here's what I love about this. If we started here, and we gave this to students. Now think about a student whose, uh, um, uh, what's it called, initial language, um, not foreign language, <laughs> their first language. Think about a student whose first language is a language that reads right to left. So they may have no reason to do three times two first, even if they didn't understand order of operations and they were reading left to right, no reason. But if I'm a student who knows nothing about order of operations whatsoever, I might look at this and go, well, I see two plus two smack dab in the middle. I'm going to start there. But if they've had this experience, why would they ever take this two right here, which represents the number of legs on a bird, and add it to this two right here? which represents the quantity of dogs. Now that's a rule. Now that's one rule we talked about today, PEMDAS, one rule. As a teacher, I spent my first couple years thinking if I could be engaging, if I can care about who they are, if I could create math scenarios that involve their name or something they're interested in, I can really grab their attention but I still ended up with this. I still ended up with rules. Oh, you wanna divide fractions? Keep change flip. That's all you gotta remember, keep change flip. Everybody over here say it, keep choral response. Oh my gosh, I wish I could punch that guy in the nose, right? That's terrible. But when I saw this and I said, wait a minute, the rules are just learned inherently because it's the experience that we're having. And I allowed them to experience it. They may not have said, I love math, it's my favorite thing. But they didn't view it as, oh, I like math or I don't like math or I'm a math person or I'm not a math person. Because they didn't see math as that. My students then saw it as something they could be curious about. Right? It may not have been their favorite thing in the world, but they had an avenue by which they can access it. And I think that is one of the things that ST Math can do to help our students go through their math instruction life without having to see themselves as a math person or not a math person. The one thing I said was, I've never had anybody say to me, I'm not a math person because I don't possess intrinsic curiosity. Everybody does. Everybody does. And ST Math allows students and people, our teachers, to harness that intrinsic curiosity. I would love to hear from you. That's my email. That's my cell phone number. Text me, call, email. Uh, thank you so much for putting up with the technical difficulties. I hope you have a great time today. Uh, 
I was a classroom teacher, I was an administrator, and so I can't even imagine what your world is like now with the pandemic. So we love you guys, and we are so grateful for what you do. Um, stay safe and stay healthy out there.